Welcome to the Great Girlfriends Podcast, where we discuss life, love, laughter, and everything in between. We're your hosts. I'm Sybil Amuti. And I'm Brandis Daniel. This week's episode is brought to you by Elvis. Just about every investment and retirement plan is created by men for men, which is fine unless you're a woman. Girl, women still earn less than men for now. We're more aware of risk and we're more likely than men to pause our careers to raise a family. And unfortunately, we typically retire with less wealth than men, even though statistics show that we live longer. That's why there's Elvest, created for women, run by and designed by women. Elvest helps women invest based on their specific goals, like buying a home, starting a business, raising a family, or just retiring like a boss. So girlfriends listeners can visit lvest.com slash girlfriends and pay no advisory fees for the first three months. Invest like a woman with Elvest. That's E-L-L-E-V-E-S-T. And that's lvest.com slash girlfriends. And we have with us Sherry Riley. Oh, well, I'm supposed to introduce myself. <laughs> yes! Because, Sherry, you've been on the show once. So we've already done yes. part one. So then part two, you just, you know, you're part you of the team. Sherry. And I feel like a great girlfriend part three. Look, yes. I'm like the triple X in the duo. <laughs> Welcome back, Sherry. <laughs> hey, ladies. Hey, we're so excited. Ladies, if you listen to that last episode with Sherry Riley, you know who she is now. You absolutely know who she is. And Sybil and I were both over here, like Sybil said, rocking up under a quilt. <laughs> oh, Sher- oh, Sherry's lap. Oh, Sherry's lap. <laughs> <laughs> all this wisdom. So much wisdom. I just feel so much more wealthy just off of the stuff that you've shared with us this last episode. I really do. Thank you, ladies. Thank it, you. It was amazing. She's a lyricist. She is a lyricist. She is. She is. She Girl, is. don't give me the wrapping up in here. All those, <laughs> all those years of working in the music industry. Yes. <laughs> you know, I think I can flow. Girl, don't tempt me. Don't tempt me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, we had to have two parts with Sherry because one episode would not have done her justice. If you haven't listened, like Brandon said, you got to go back and listen to our last episode with Sherry. And this episode in particular, we pull forward Sherry's story. Sherry started out a girl from Kentucky who worked eight years to get into the music industry. She got in there. She had six marketing campaigns to do in, in 30, 30 days. days. And they were with artists that are world-renowned yes. artists. One of them being a teenage boy she met named Usher, who went on to become a superstar. Not to mention TNC. my girl Tony Brandon. Braxton, <laughs> my twin Tony <laughs> Braxton. Yes, yes. <laughs> Tony Braxton that cracks me up every time. Outcast from leaving LaFace into moving into building Glue Inc., which was a uh, 17 years as an entrepreneur and media maven, marketing maven at Glue Inc., where she helped to do all of these exponential campaigns for the NBA, the WNBA, um, T- TNT, TBS, and, yes. and the brand Coca Cola, Converse, BMW, BMW Porsche. Porsche. And the brands go on and on and on and on and on. And then Sherry closed out that episode talking about this harmony. It's not either or, it's and. 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 Love it. And. <laughs> and so she talks about how you create the harmony that you want in your life by not making exceptions. You are more inclusive instead of yeah. creating exceptions for things, which is oh, so good. So good. Every one of us is searching for the way to create that harmony. Absolutely. But then she doesn't stop there. She does not stop there. Now, she could have stopped there. As, 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 stop. as somebody told us before, she could have put on her little old lady tights. Yes. And, and, and got her little old lady haircut and say, I've done enough. Yes. I, I have so worked much. in the music industry. I've had my own business for 17 years. I'm done. Yes. But she didn't stop there. No, 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 no. Sherry expanded exponentially. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love she expanded. it. I mean, what, Sherry, I feel like you just, you keep, you keep stopping and reflecting to locate what's next and to ask the right question so you can pull from the right place in season. And so yeah. this work of art that you have uh, presented that yeah. has been, been released now yesterday. Yesterday. Um, yeah, girl. Woo-hoo! We're so excited for Sherry's new book, Exponential Living. Yes. 15-year journey. 
a 15 year journey. Wow. When did you first get the idea for this book, Sherry? Around the time that I left La Face is when I, I didn't have an idea for the book. I didn't think of it as a book, but I knew that there was something that was being captured in my spirit and my soul and my journey. But I felt like I was an anomaly, you know, leaving a, you know, high six figure income and expense account and unlimited, you know, unlimited expense account, car allowance, all these things to really have a more inclusive life. I thought I was an anomaly. And then my friends started calling me, you know, with their 300000 a year job and, and, you know, great careers, great businesses. And they would ask me like, okay, girl, like I want to be married, but how do I do that? Or, you know, I'm making all this money. I've got these, you know, expensive purses and shoes, but I'm unhappy. And I realized as I was just sharing with them the things I was doing, that it wasn't just my story. It really was the story of men and women. Mm -hmm. And so then I began to just start journaling, you know, just writing what I was going through. And along that journey, I met an amazing man. His name is Raul Davis. And he was the first person that really said to me in a tangible way, you need to write a book. Judge Hatchett had told me in 1996, I need to write a book. But I just kind of took that as, oh, that was cute. Because she heard me talk on a panel and she was just like, you need to write a book. But when I met Raul and he really like there was a tangible, he can help me. He's a book consultant. And then it took three years to get my agents and it took four years to get my publishing deal. So it's, yeah, so it was, it was 10 active years of, okay, now I'm really writing a book. It was taken over 10 years to actually get the book in the market yesterday. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. Congratulations. Wow. Congratulations, Sherry. Thank you. Okay, so I have to ask you this. I hadn't planned on it, but what made you decide to really go hard after an agent for three years? And I also want to know the four years that it took to get your publishing deal. What did that look like? Oh, my goodness. So I tell people all the time, you know, publisher, self-publish. You know, people always ask, like, what, what what's the difference? How do you decide the other one or the other? And you really have to start with the end in mind. Everyone writes a book for a different reason. And so for me, I truly wanted something that's transformational, not transactional. Mm -hmm. Meaning I just didn't want to write a book, put it out and people buy it. I really wanted a manual. I wanted the guide on how do you stop spending 100% of your time on 10% of who you are. And I also knew that I wanted to be able to truly maximize and leverage the great career that we shared about in the last episode. Mm -hmm. And in order to truly be able to maximize those relationships, I needed to have a national brand. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I decided to go after, you know, a publishing deal instead of self-publishing. Oh, it was tough because right around that time, the publishing industry changed, began to shift because of, you know, bookstores closing and where publishers, you know, they may have been releasing 700 titles a year. Now they release like 30 titles a year. Wow. So it took three years of writing a book proposal that was absolutely awful. I know that now at the time (laughs) we didn't know that. But Raul sent it out to, I think, about five agents the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. And my agent, Denise Marcel, she called me and said, hey, can you please give me until the Monday after Thanksgiving? I want to read it over the holidays. Mm -hmm. And true to her word, she called me on Monday and she said, you know, your book proposal really isn't that good. There's some potential here, but I want to sign you for no other reason than the title. Stop spending 100% of your time on 10% of who you are. She said, I need the answer to that. Wow. So I, want, I want to help you write the book because I need the answer to that. Wow. <laughs> and that's how I got my agent. And then the four years to get the publishing deal, because that book proposal was pretty bad. <laughs> and I had to really go on the journey of what the nine principles. So there's nine principles of exponential living. And I really had to go on the journey of really what those principles are Mm -hmm. and how to capture them in a book. Again, not just wanting a transaction where people bought the book, but transformation where they bought the book, wrote in the margins, you know, highlighted it, told their friends about it. I really wanted that transformational Mm -hmm. experience. And there's this amazing quote, 
that I read on the internet. It says, you know, set a goal so big that you have to become the person that can achieve it. I love that. And that's what happened. You know, those four years, uh, it was frustrating. My life fell apart in the midst of that. So that was a part of it. But I had to really, I had to really commit to what the truth of that material is. Because at one point, the book proposal had evolved to something that really wasn't what I wanted to stand on. And when I got to the point of really giving up and saying, you know what, I can't do this. I realized that I didn't need to give up. I needed to get solid. Mm -hmm. And when I got solid and said, no, this is truly what I want to put out in the world. And I removed all the distractions. Like I got rid of 80% of everything on my to-do list and really got committed to getting focused on the true things I wanted to focus on and not all the opportunities that were really distractions. Mm -hmm. One of them, you know, we talked about in the last episode of me closing glue. Uh, That was a part of it. It was a Mm -hmm. great opportunity, but it was a distraction. And when I really removed the distractions from my life and got focused, the message flowed out of me. So what took me four years to do December 2014, I cleared out the distractions. My book proposal was finished February 7th, 2015. And I had my publishing deal February 2015. What took me four years to do with all the, you know, all the distractions, I literally was able to do in eight weeks when I got really clear and stood on what was truly true to me. Oh, that's fantastic. Now, let me ask this. Were you always a writer or was this book on the inside of you? So you weren't. The book, no, the book was on, uh, inside of me. I tell uh-huh. people I am an author, not a writer. Mm, I, I love that. I, I, I totally That's see me. that. I, I totally see that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I have a, a gentleman where I wrote everything in the book mm-hmm. and then I sent it to him and then he cleaned it up. Like he yeah. put it in like book each chapter he put in book form and you know clean up the grammar and so I'm an author I'm not a writer so even I tell some authors who are hung up in trying to write the book Mm -hmm. speak it in your voice recorder Mm -hmm. and then send it to someone to put it in book form but don't let the message inside of you not get out because you're not a writer Good. But you are the author of the content. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Wow. I hope that sets somebody free right yes. there. Yes. We just need to be the author of the content. Yes. And let the writer be the writer. But you, yes. Yeah, but you be the thought yeah. leader and push that, push the message out. Yes. So this message, Sherry, is powerful. Stop spending 100% of your time on 10% of who... No, did I say it the wrong way? Oh, That's it. Yeah, you got 100% it. 100% of your time on 10% of who you are. And most of us wouldn't even know that we're doing that. So true. But when you hear, you know, when we heard you say for the first time, Sherry, at Restoration Weekend, and then you you dove into how we dedicate our time and we waste it and where our energy resources are spent, I was like, goodness, I got to reassess yes. some of the things that I do daily and the why behind it and prioritize, yes. you know, what how I need to, you know, spend my time. And so... That alone makes me want, like the lady said to you, she's like, I, I have to get the answer to that. How do we do it? How, How do we do stop it? These, doing it? <laughs> yes. And these nine principles, and keep in mind now, as we've shared, it's been 15 years since I, the first time I said that to someone. And I, I said it to a young lady and literally it hit both of us like a ton of bricks, the same way it does now, you know, 16 years later. And I went on the journey. What is the How? And these nine principles, they are the how. If we can truly commit to living these nine principles every day, then we will accomplish the how. And truly what exponential living is, my definition of exponential living is a lifestyle of pursuing peace, choosing clarity, and living courageously. And if you can commit to pursuing peace in any and all Mm -hmm. situations, it will give you the ability to choose clarity and clarity means what clarity truly means is that you allow yourself to be honest and authentic with what matters and means the most to you. Mm-hmm. Right. Cause we always know bottom line is stop saying, I don't know. Cause mm-hmm. we always know we may not be ready to deal with it. We may not be committed to changing it. It may hurt to accept it, but we always know. And when we pursue the peace in any situation, when we choose to own and be authentically honest with ourselves, it empowers us to be courageous. Mm -hmm. And when we can live courageously, there's nothing we can't do or not do. Mm -hmm. Right. 
So when we get those three principles down and then commit to living those nine power principles of exponential living and understand it's a lifestyle, not a goal or a destination, Mm -hmm. that's how that's how we expand that 10 percent to our 100 percent living. Wow. I love that. Okay, now you can't just be dropping bombs on us <laughs> and, 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 and and not going to. I mean, what can you give us can are? you give a, can you give us little snippets of the nine principles? I sure can. So the first principle is live in your power. And that's all about our attitude. You know, and I I shared with you guys at Restoration Weekend what power is. It's Mm -hmm. our perspective, ownership, wisdom, engagement and reward. The second principle is healthy living is more than just a diet, which is about relationships, because so many of us think that healthy living is just did I work out and did I eat right. Mm -hmm. But really, healthy living is about the relationship you have with your God. It's about the relationship you have with yourself. It's about the relationship you have with your family and your friends. That's really the core of healthy living. The third principle is pursue peace and a positive mind. Mm -hmm. Pursue peace and a positive mind, Mm -hmm. which is about, oh, I'm sorry, living your power is about your choices. Got it. Pursue peace and a positive mind. That's about your attitude. Okay. You know, because if you go into a rocky situation or if you go into a great situation, your attitude dictates who you are in the midst of it. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Whether you're afraid, whether you're happy, your attitude. So mm-hmm. pursue peace and a positive mind is about your attitude. The fourth principle is have a servant's heart and a mm-hmm. giving spirit. Mm-hmm. And that's about service. Mm-hmm. But here's the unique blend to that, about the your that 100%. All of us, especially high achievers like the great girlfriends, right? We know how to get stuff done. Mm-hmm. Well, all of us give in some way, whether it's through a charity, whether it's through writing a check, whether it's through our church, whether it's through our sororities, whether it's through a civic organization, we all understand the value of giving. Mm -hmm. But what I really focus on when I say I have a servant's heart and a giving spirit, I mean, how are you serving and giving to your family Mm -hmm. and to you, right? How many of us are genuinely sitting around the dinner table engaged with our family and our friends? Mm -hmm. How many of how many of us spouses, wives and husbands are really re, like, how do we serve our husbands or our wives where they are? Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how do we really serve our family, friends? And then how do we serve the community? Oh, I love that. The Wait, fifth, Sherry, the, I don't know if we should give the rest away. I think. They need OK, because, you know, cause cause you listen, on the road. these mean so much to me. Girl. I'm like, they need to be diving into the book right about yes. now. Yes. <laughs> So on the episode, Sherry, Sue is always like, ladies, pen and paper. Pen and paper, pen and paper, pen and paper. Right now. Pen and paper, because I feel like I need some pen and paper. Right now, like, wait, what'd you say, Sherry? Hold on. I'm still Hold on. power. Hold on. Power. Power, Sherry said. <laughs> Pen and paper. Y'all will not be greedy and sit here and try to get it all. I know, I know, but I had to. But I, but Sherry, I think I was the greedy one in this situation. I'm gonna require everyone listening to go and purchase that book. Oh, Girl, Sherry, that sounds you. so you good. See, it's what? so. I mean, when I tell you, it's my passion. Yeah. I truly want people to live that hundred percent. Like, if you hadn't stopped me, girl, I would have went all the way through. I like, know. okay, and, <laughs> and I would have let you share. No, no, we got to feed <laughs> your kids. Someone like, no, 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 no. feed the kids. No, nope, Sherry, nope, that's nope. so By good, though. Beautiful. Oh my goodness. I love it. So, Sherry, yeah. tell us if you could give us a story of of revelation around one of these principles in your life. How you. Just, uh. Yeah, show, show, show yeah. us how one of them came alive for you mm. as an author. I'm a, yeah, so <laughs> the um, Build Lasting Confidence. Build Lasting Confidence is about being present, mm-hmm. right? About being present. So my, my daughter at the time who was six, she was playing lacrosse for the very first time. Came home one day, said she wanted to play lacrosse. Six years old, first grade, youngest person on the team. And uh, so she had her very first lacrosse game. And it was about maybe a 40-minute drive to the game. And so I'm driving her to the game. And my girlfriend, who lives in Cleveland, I hadn't talked to her for a while. She had called me while we were driving. So in my mind, I said, oh, you know what? I'll just call her back, you know, during the game. And we'll catch up then, and I'll watch the game. So we get to the game. 
and they're out on the football field playing and I'm sitting in the stands and I've got my, you know, my iPhone, I've got my earbuds in, the phone's in my lap, the earbuds are in, so I can see the game. Mm -hmm. So I'm watching my baby play. I talked to my girlfriend maybe about the first quarter, quarter and a half, right? So I see the majority of the game, my baby wins. Wins her very first across oh, game. Wow. I love it. Uh, I am ecstatic. My baby played most of the game. I'm walking on the field. I know she's going to run and jump in my arms. I know she's going to hug me. We're going to celebrate. So I'm waiting and she's walking to me and I'm excited. My baby walks up to me, stops right in front of me and goes, Mommy, I cannot believe that you were on the phone for my very first lacrosse game. Yeah. Oh, gosh. girl, she dropped her head and walked over to the team. Now, my ego was like, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> and my ego was like, oh, no, she did not. I didn't draw 40 minutes to get her butt to this <laughs> game. Girl, my ego was like, look how many mamas is here. Me and the other one. Are you kidding me right now? Like, <laughs> y'all know, y'all mamas. My right. ego was like, look, my ego was like, coach. Finish with them girls, cause I'm gonna tell you something. Me and that one right there, we got some. <laughs> my ego was ready, ready yes. for her, yeah. right? So she finishes up with her with the coach, and my ego is like, oh yeah, come on over here, come on, come on, sit down. She walks up to me, and I look at my baby, and I said, I am so sorry. Mm-hmm. I am so sorry because what my baby taught me in that moment is my presence was not enough. She wanted me to be present. Yeah. yeah. And ladies, great yeah. girlfriends. Yeah. That's the reality for everything in our lives. Yeah. See, we we spend so much time in the presence of our family, in the presence of our friends, in the presence of our business colleagues, in the presence of meetings, in the presence of phone calls. Mm-hmm. But how much of your time are you really present? Mm-hmm. Yes. So present. I have never been on the phone call ever again when I'm at her lacrosse game, but I'm not on the phone when she's in the car. Like yeah. I'm not on the phone when it's time to do her homework. Yeah. I'm not on the phone when a girlfriend is like, I really need us to go to lunch. I really need to talk to you. Mm-hmm. I don't, I, I don't, I don't have that phone or whatever the distraction is. Mm-hmm. I commit it to being present. And what that's done for my confidence mm-hmm. is when I'm present in every moment Mm -hmm. it doesn't give me the time to be stressed about what's happening and it doesn't give me the time to be worried or beating myself up about what had happened or what Mm -hmm. didn't happen yes Mm -hmm. I tell you your confidence is tied into just being present in every moment and I I learned that from my six-year-old at a lacrosse game hallelujah Yeah, that is wow, so good. that's amazing, Sherry. That is so good. And yeah, so we gotta be true. Present. And so <laughs> true. I mean, because you're figuring out like how do you like you're saying, like how do how do you juggle it all? But at the end of the day, if you're juggling it all and if your child is telling you that you're not present, what's the mm-hmm. point? Mm-hmm. What's the point? What's the, what's the point, point of it? You know, what's the point of any of it? <laughs> and if and here's the thing: so if true. if all of us right now on this amazing opportunity to just build and bond, right, mm-hmm. and really share with all us great girlfriends, but if I was sitting here stressed about what I didn't get done at 11 o'clock, or if I'm worried about the presentation I've got next week, or if I'm trying to check emails while we trying to talk, we're not going to have this amazing connection yes. that's going to feed the audience and feed the people who tune in, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But that's what most of us do. And then we wonder, why am I so defeated? Why do I feel yeah. de- so deflated? Why is I, Why do I feel like I'm out of rhythm? Well, you're out of rhythm because you're not in the present moment. Yes. Yeah. You're not aligned with the present moment. I so if we it. really want to build our lasting confidence, we got to commit to being present. Yes. Every- yeah. That's and so the good. thing is, years will pass by. Oh, my gosh. Years yes. will pass by. And you won't by. even realize it until you look up one day. Yeah. yeah and you and have all a kid you got- who's distant and a husband who's distant. And, and what <laughs> you got to show for it is your Facebook a post. Monument. Right. Your Facebook post. <laughs> Years and, and 200 new Facebook friends. Look, <laughs> right. wait a minute. All the memories put, uh, pop up in your Facebook uh, yes. feed, and you like, I don't even remember that. You yes. know what I'm I don't even remember that moment. Yes. yes. Isn't that something? That yes. is so true. 
Wow. Yeah. It, it makes us, hopefully it makes, you know, me, you, and everyone else who's listening reprioritize what presence means, you know, and how we can create those gifts for the people that are in our life. You yes. Know what I'm and my baby just walked in. Hi. 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 How are you? She was like, who are these two uh, crazy uh, ladies? I'm in the car. Yeah. Look, exponential living. Uh, I'm yeah. <laughs> Exponential living at its best, right? How are you? Oh, she didn't expect company. Oh, <laughs> they like what y'all doing here? <laughs> I was looking for my mom. Oh, so uh, sweet. What's her name? Dominique. Hi, Dominique. My niece's middle name is Dominique. Look at her; she's so cute. <laughs> Through the phrase. Through the phrase. Dominique, Through the we're brain. just finished talking about how awesome you are. Yes. Your mommy just finished talking about how awesome you are. Thank you. Aww. Yeah, she sure did. We're excited about her new book, Dominique. So we're just talking about it with a whole bunch of women around the world and how we can get everybody to go out and get your mom's book. Right? Yes. Yeah, on sale yesterday. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's so cute. Oh, she's like, and I'm out. <laughs> That's so sweet. Yes. But was that not on cue? I'm like, oh my God, we're talking about being present. <laughs> I know. That was so, no, that's so good. So, because Sherry, you also have a home study to go with this book, right? Yes. So let's talk about this home study a bit. What's, is, am I going, is this my whole, like, am I going to just be like done with my old self and just like, what's going to happen to me? What's going to What's well, you know, me? you know, what's so amazing is I actually have in the book, each chapter ends with what I call vision action results. Mm -hmm. And there's actually exercises in the book. And then the home study course is an expansion of that. So okay. there's like two, I do one to two at the most one, I think I did three exercises. But in the home study course, there's a more in depth program that I take you through. Got it. I love yes, it. Yes. For each of those principles. Again, remember, I want vision, action, results. Like, I want the how. Yeah. Like, I don't want people to just read my book and say it was a good book. Like, yes. that will, I want them to say, oh, my God, I learned how to really stop spending 100% of my time on 10% of who I am. Like, I really learned how to do it. So let's look at the scenario. I'm a woman who's in my career. This is just an example. One of our listeners I can think of, or uh, I'm just going to make it one, but this is a segment of our listeners. I have this career. I've worked hard to get to where I am in my career, but it's not my passion. Yeah. But I got this salary. I get to travel. I get to do all these fun things and I have built all these relationships, but I don't feel passionate. Am yes. I spending, you know, 100% of my time on 10%? What, what's my first shift? What do I do? Let me tell you, I, I, that's the heart of exponential living. So there's four pain points that we all either come to one of them or multiples of them. Mm. The first pain point is what's next. Like, mm. I've reached my goal. Yeah. I love what I do, but I, I'm done. Like, I want to move to something else. Yeah. The second one is what is now and what? You know, now what? Like, I've reached my goal. I don't want to change my job, but I do need to create bandwidth for other things. The next one is, is this it? Like, mm. I've been working, I've been working yeah. since I was 15 to become senior vice president or CEO, and I've reached this goal. Is this it? Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't even like this. Like, yeah. wow. Is, is this it? And then the last one is, how do I live? You know, that means transition. You know, you're 42 and you just got downsized or right sized or mm -hmm. you, you've reached that point in your life where you're like, man, I want to have a family or some children or you've gotten to that point and your doctor's like, if you don't make some real changes, mm -hmm. you're going to have diabetes or you're going to have high blood pressure. You know, you get to that point where they're, you know, how do I live? Because there's a transition that's been forced upon me. Mm -hmm. And so in that example, those four pain points, that's when we really have to go through those principles, when we really have to focus in on, you know, what is the perspective? Mm -hmm. You know, where do we need to take ownership of what's true and authentic to us? Mm -hmm. You know, what clarity do we need? Like, what's our plan? Like, what's the one or two most important next steps? Yeah. Like I, I say to my clients all the time. You know, people ask the question, if money wasn't an issue, what would you do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. what, what I ask my clients is if there was only one thing you could do, what would that be? Mm -hmm. 
right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we have to commit to the actions. Like we have to commit to the implementation. And from that, we've got to be consistent. And so when I work with my clients, with, and I meet so many of my clients, male and female, that's the challenge they get to. Mm -hmm. I really look at, do they need to, do they want to leave where they are? Or do they really just want to add bandwidth? Do they want to just expand what they want to do? One of my clients, she was, you know, EVP, I mean, EP at a, you know, international morning show. And she loved her job, loved what she did, but she knew something was missing. She was unfulfilled. And uh, we worked together for a year and she realized she wanted a family. Mm -hmm. And uh, she adopted her baby son a few months ago, almost a year awesome. ago now. Uh -huh. And so now she didn't leave her job. She just added bandwidth for the part of her life that was missing. Yeah. And so we really have to be honest and authentic and see where we need to fill those gaps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's I good. Love it, Sherry. Wow. Sherry, you are so yeah. incredible. Oh, yeah. thank you. I'm like girl. eating up every word. I'm scraping the plate, sopping it up with a biscuit. <laughs> You know what I feel like we're gonna need to do? I feel like we're gonna need to have an Ask Sherry segment coming up where people get to send in their questions and ask Sherry. Girl, I would love that. You know, I'd love that. I mean, so, well, that's honest, honestly my favorite thing to do yeah. is like when I speak is what I you know have that engagement because that's really where the real magic happens. Mm -hmm. Is when you can have those, you know, what I call that exponential conversation. Yeah. You know, that's, so anytime you guys let me know, oh, I'd love to, to spend time that with a great girlfriend. I love it. So if you, girlfriends, if you want to ask Sherry segment, you see how I'm trying to use diction here. Yes. If yes. you want an ask Sherry segment, you can email us the great girlfriends at gmail.com with yes. the subject ask Sherry. Yes. And we will gather all those questions and set up a date with Sherry. Yes. Uh, Sherry I would love it. it. I love Sherry, it. where do we go and buy? So I bought mine pre-ordered and I yes. actually have five more to gift away. I gifted five. I have five more to gift. So the first people that email us at thegreatgirlfriends at gmail.com. So where can we purchase? Yes. Yeah, so we can go into any Barnes and Noble. So any of your Barnes and Nobles in your respective areas, you can order through Amazon, barnesandnoble.com, target.com, or you can just go to sherryriley.com forward slash book. Okay. And it'll take you to all the online retailers. But please, please go into your Barnes and Nobles. I, I really need my great girlfriends to actually go in the store, okay. go in the, in the self-help section, mm -hmm. look for Sherry Riley, and definitely pick up Exponential Living. You got it. That's right. So we have been tasked to get her to the bestseller list. And we can do that. We're going to do it. We can do that. So every single one of you around the world, we have 80 countries represented listening right now. Yes. We can all go on right now, log on, hit Barnes & Noble, grab the book. Don't grab. I wouldn't grab one because that's kind of selfish. I would probably grab like three. You need you to know? give some great girlfriends. Yes, yeah, you have to give yes. to your friends. Absolutely. So, you know, grab a few that you can gift out and, you know, add some value to the people in your life. Absolutely. I'm so excited. And I, I so love you guys. Let me tell you. And, and when I say these two ladies are truly great girlfriends, when I when we were at Restoration Weekend and I did share with the ladies there and Sybil charged everyone in the room to buy 10 copies. <laughs> and... <laughs> And literally half the room bought five or ten copies. Yeah. And Sybil, I, I wanted to share this with you. Because of that act, because it's so hard for us to do those things for ourselves. Mm -hmm. But you showed me what it meant to ask. Remember I said yeah. earlier that we have to ask, yes. right? You showed me what it meant to ask. And I started asking that. I started wow. asking people. And because, I mean, you jump-started my sales. That was my initial big, like, oh, yes. my, my Penguin Random House was like, oh, my God, you got people buying 10 copies of your book. And they made, that was the first thing that made them really notice, like, wait a minute, how did you get 10 people to buy 10 or 5 copies of a book? And um, you that support, you taught me the power of asking, and then you just allowed your voice 
to speak for me in a time when I didn't even know that's what I should be saying. And so I, Sybil so Brandis, amazing. I so appreciate See, both of you guys. And man, when I tell you, you're authentically great girlfriends. That's you are authentically great girlfriends. And I, I thank you. I truly thank that's you. Amazing. Oh, Siri. Oh. <laughs> Go on, Don't cry. Do it. Don't do it. Make her cry, Sherry. <laughs> No, that's so well, sweet. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. That's just what we do. That's what we yes. do. We're supposed yes. to do that. We are called. Can you to imagine action. if if we use that and if everyone was doing that for each yes. other? Like exactly. the power that the things that we could create. Because we sat there and soaked up all of Sherry's goodness for free, and we're like, wait a minute. <laughs> these friends and family can do is log on real quick. Everybody got a hundred dollars. They can drop on some books. Yes. You dro- if we and would drop a hundred dollars on meals. Yes. Yeah. In a heartbeat. Do. And you know, the power, and to Michelle Hargrove's credit, the power of her community, because the women yeah. in that room responded. Yeah. Wow. I mean, they genuinely, 50%, oh, I'm sorry, 70% of the room bought five books or more. Yes. Wow. Uh, That's amazing. Isn't that amazing? That's amazing. amazing. Yeah. (laughs) A room of great girlfriends. Michelle Michelle Hargrove and Sybil are going to get tasked. I'm telling you, Sherry. (laughs) Listen. I know. Because I believe that we all have the resources and we can think so quickly to go on Louis Vuitton. I mean, I could, you know, we could just find a quick way to run into a store and buy something and indulge. But why not give something so valuable that can change a person's life? Absolutely. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, Thank you. Thank just, you. Yeah, I girl, love it. We're going to sell that book out. That's yeah. what we're doing. <laughs> I love yes. it. Sherry, we thank you. So again, if you didn't, if you didn't get the message, <laughs> buy, buy the book. <laughs> Go get the book. Get multiple copies. Give one to your mom, your best friend, your cousin, your brother, your sister, your coworker. If yes. you have a coworker you can't stand, give her that book. Yes. Buy that book on her. And here's yes. the thing. For all these great girlfriends, get the audio book for your husband. Yes. Get the yes. audio book or the ebook for your husband. Let Absolutely. them they can when they're working out or riding in the car, whatever. Let they can download that audio book. So Absolutely. Yes, yes it is available audio book and ebook as well. I love it. I love it. Congratulations. I love it. Author. Sher- Sherry, where, <laughs> where can our great girlfriends find you on social? Yes, yeah, so website Sherry Riley S H E R I R I L E Y dot com. Mm-hmm. Uh, same thing for Instagram and Twitter, and then Facebook and LinkedIn is Sherry Riley dot com. That Sherry Riley D O T C O M. Got it. Awesome. Got it. Awesome. Yes. Well, this was amazing. So food. So oh, food. Oh, Sherry, oh, I almost had you giving the whole book away. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting over here. I was so greedy. Oh, I love it. I, you know what? You were just giving me an opportunity to do a really great trailer. There's just, Sherry, there's just I was so getting greedy, girl. I had, I had put away that teaspoon. I had, I had picked up the tablespoon. <laughs> She was like, what's number six? I no, love it. No, 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 no. That was your sample. This is a supermarket. Get on to the line. Go, go to aisle eight and get your book. Try to get, try to get full off a sample. Full off a sample. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, y'all trifling going plate. into Costco, getting full off a sample. Uh, yeah, you know it. You know that's the whole thing going to Costco. You're going to yeah. get all of a sample. I'm going to Costco hungry. <laughs> come get come out full. Sample. Yes, you will. <laughs> Look, the kids, mom, I'm hungry. Don't worry. We're going to Costco. <laughs> you get a little meal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, oh, so my God. It's me. Okay, that's great to know. Because oh. <laughs> that is so my thing. We're going to Costco. Go. Babe, you'll be full in a minute. It's you'll okay. be all right. Go get your yeah. cup of more those sausages. <laughs> Funny. So great girlfriends, Sybil and I did not share our socials, but you guys can definitely check us out at Sybil underscore Amuti, A M U T I, and Brandis at Brandis Daniel. Yes. And make sure you follow and connect with us at the Great Girlfriends on Gmail and I'm sorry, Gmail. On, on Instagram, Instagram, yes. And the Facebook group. But we want to thank our husbands, Kwaku. I love you. Thank you. And thank you to Rich Daniel. Thank you, and babe. Joe- Jovan Riley, thank you for your continued support. Love you. Yes, and to these babies. Yes. Woo.
Yes. Y'all that y'all met on the podcast. Yes. yes. <laughs> and and thank you to Miss Sky Daniel for her little one year old sassy self. So cute. Yes, and we thank you, Great Girlfriends, for trusting us as your go-to source for everything life, love, and laughter. Make sure you listen every week on iTunes, Stitcher, Blueberry, Podcast Republic, Podcast, Podcast Bean, excuse me, and every other podcasting service. And then check us out on social on our Instagram. The Great Girlfriends. Twitter. The underscore Great GFS. Facebook. The Great Girlfriends. And make sure you're getting in that Facebook group where we have tons of engagement and conversation and solutions yes. and everything's in that group yes, so you, yes i love it well make sure you post your questions online you share with your friends keep, keep listening and keep being a great girlfriend, great girlfriend. <laughs> i'm sybil i'm brandis i am sherry riley and, and we're, we're signing, signing off yay, yay.